Um, for instance, she has amended even the title uh, to ensure that counties are, uh, are recognized uh, as, as service providers for health where um, health has been devolved. Again, Mr. Speaker, we, I see in the section where the, defin the definition of the word medical supplies has been, has been, I would like to mention that has been, um, the medical supplies definition has also uh, been enhanced to include therapeutic feeds, nutritional formulations, and this is a really major part of prevention. One of the big deal in our country is global acute malnutrition. Mr. Speaker, we have in counties, especially a county like Isiolo, global acute malnutrition that is 30%, 27 between, it ranges between 37 to, uh, 27 to 30%. That is the threshold for crisis in terms of uh, nutrition. And, the, and what that does, Mr. Speaker, it, that it stunts the growth of our children, not just in body, but in the mind as well. And sometimes when I see kids, or I even see how sometimes even our children are behaving, I keep wondering, is it because of this phenomenon of, of really acute global malnutrition, and because we see kids that really are so stunted, not just in body, but also in, in, in the mind. And so in the next few years, we will have a generation of children in this country that are so disadvantaged, both in terms of body and also the mind. So Mr. Speaker, I'm very, I'm very happy that in this, in this bill, we're not just looking at uh, prevent, um, curative, but also preventive, especially from the perspective of ensuring that there's good nutrition formulations and therapeutic feeds. Mr. Speaker, also um, the amendment in section D, section, uh, section, uh, section three, um, E, where it also spells out how uh, KEMSA goes into, enters into partnership with county government to establish drawing rights and maintain appropriate supply chain systems and, and, and drug, drug supplies. Mr. Speaker, for a long time, I worked uh, with the Global Fund um, system, and I know for a fact, and I can attest to the fact that there was always talkouts, but also not just talkouts, but expired drugs. This is because there's no system in place within KEMSA to, to, for, of, 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 of triggering um, supplies go to, the, to, to, the, to our dispensaries to, and to our health facilities uh, regularly and in good time. And therefore, I think this bill is very timely. It will provide a framework within which then um, stockouts will be managed, drug expirations will be managed, but also the needs of counties will be prioritized, not just from, from, from the national level. Mr. Speaker, as well, Section 5, I am very happy that we have, not, uh, we have not neglected the issue of personnel, and so this bill uh, seeks to enhance um, the county's involvement in, in medical health personnel, especially uh, for the authority, where two persons are competitively recruited and app appointed by the cabinet secretary, but also two persons of the opposite gender. Again, I am very happy to note that this bill tries to make sure that our constitutional requirement to have not more than two thirds of the same gender in any appointive or elective positions is also um, adhered to. And therefore, I'm, I'm happy that we, she has looked as well at the issue of, um, of, of health workers and, and health personnel. Mr. Speaker, also uh, section six, um, uh, subsection, uh, Paragraph 6, subsection 19 of the Principal Act is amended by inserting um, certain um, subsections immediately after subsection 1, which I think is a very timely as well. It says that where procurement is carried out past one to an agreement with a county government under section 41E, the authority shall ensure that there is consultation and proper identification of the needs of the county government prior to such procurement. Mr. Speaker, participation of the key stakeholders or the key client, in this case the county, is paramount. We cannot afford to have national agencies just doing whatever they feel like doing without even consulting or, or, or really um, working together with counties. So I'm glad that this, which did not exist in, in, in the prior act, has been taken uh, care of. Again, but I'd like to, to, to mention that in uh, paragraph 7, sub, subsection 21, 
One, the cabinet secretary may, on the recommendation of the authority and upon consultation with the council, make regulations for the better carrying out of the objects of the act. I think we should say shall, so that then they are compelled to actually do it and not given a leeway to do it or not to do it. Mr. Speaker, I think this bill is very timely and will provide, um, will provide alignment not just to the Constitution, but also to the Health Act 2017, which assigns responsibilities to the county governments to procure medical supplies with respect to health facilities in counties. And therefore, I think it's about time the stronghold on centralizing things through either the national government or its agencies is, is, starts to be, to be looked at and to be interrogated. And this bill does exactly that. It's inter interrogating that. In fact, not only should we interrogate um, as regards uh, devolved functions, we should also interrogate other acts with a view to finding out whether or with a view to really challenging whether or not um, they are suited for national or county governments and, and, and also legislate around that. So with those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I support this bill and hope that all other bills, whether for devolved functions or not, are interrogated by this House for the alignment um, and for their um, alignment to the Constitution and other pieces of legislation. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Ochiloayako. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, for giving me an opportunity to make my remarks uh, on this bill. Now, Mr. Speaker, I would like to start by congratulating uh, Senator Senator for thinking about health, for thinking about uh, uh, counties, and for thinking about devolution. Mr. Speaker, devolution is the centerpiece of the 2010 Constitution, and devolution is what is in every Kenyan's lips and expectation when it comes to mode and methodology of governance in our current dispensation. Mr. Speaker, if you just quickly look at uh, Article 174 of the Constitution that talks about uh, objects of devolution and go to paragraph H, which I proceed to read to facilitate the decentralization of state organs, their functions and services from the capital of Kenya, and uh, to J, which goes to, to enhance checks and balances and the separation of powers. Mr. Speaker, uh, devolution envisaged that uh, state organs, state institutions will devolve their services, will decentralize their services, and take them to as close as possible to the small or the average person in the village. So Mr. Speaker, what this bill seeks to do is to appreciate that other than the fact that uh, health is a devolved matter under the fourth schedule of the Constitution, it is important that uh, institutions that offer services uh, to Kenyans are devolved and taken to the level or to the areas where Kenyans ordinarily reside. So the uh, establishment of uh, Kenya Medical Services Authority and enjoining that authority uh, to be connected to county governors, uh, to county governments where services are offered is the right step at the right time and for the right reason, which is a constitutional reason. There have been instances, repeated attempts, and also opportunities where the National Assembly uh, has uh, attempted to legislate uh, matters that belong to counties and uh, legislate these matters in such a manner that uh, this House, the Senate, has not uh, been consulted. And uh, we have ended up in situations where pieces of legislation are uh, put in place that uh, perhaps do not uh, mirror what the constitutional architecture reflects. Uh, pieces of legislation have come forth that uh, do not align themselves to the spirit of uh, the constitution. The constitution envisages that health matters 
uh, will be dealt with at counties and that only matters of policy will be dealt with at the level of the national government. And uh, Mr. Speaker, it's unfortunate that uh, the budgets that uh, we have been talking about lately are budgets where a lot of funds are uh, left here in Nairobi, where uh, RAS uh, functions and responsibilities, particularly important ones like health, are uh, not adequately funded, thereby leaving uh, county governments with the inability uh, to discharge uh, these functions. Mr. Speaker, where I come from, which uh, is uh, Migori County, we are appreciative of the fact that uh, we get uh, funded through the equitable share that we get nationally. But uh, just like other counties, we are not adequately funded. So uh, treatment and health care has uh, suffered adversely in Migori County, same as it is suffering in other counties. It is important that uh, as we legislate matters health, we must uh, stay focused that uh, where the rubber meets the road is the counties, and that is where we should uh, take resources, we should take opportunities, and we should take uh, focus when it comes to matters of health. In my county, for instance, last month, uh, at uh, the only referral uh, hostel we have in the county, uh, which is Migori uh, Level 5 Referral uh, Hostel, uh, a health service provider, a nurse, lost her life. An employee of Migori County government lost her life uh, because there was no uh, supply of drugs, there was no supply of blood, and that is very unfortunate. Uh, you can imagine how many people lose their lives uh, in Migori County and in other counties because they cannot access uh, medical supplies. They cannot access uh, uh, blood uh, supplies because there is no uh, facility uh, in the county, you know, to uh, keep the, uh, the, the blood, uh, to make it uh, available for use when it is wanted. So this is the kind of situation that uh, this piece of legislation is ensuring that we develop uh, infrastructure, legislative infrastructure, to ensure that the focus of uh, medical supplies uh, is in counties, is done in consultation with our county governments and the boards that we are setting, uh, and that we will be allocating uh, substantial resources uh, in terms of uh, national monies uh, uh, are, uh, have uh, in their boards uh, members who have been identified uh, and recommended by uh, the Council of Governors so that we do not have uh, the national government having both uh, what we call uh, the knife and the yam, having the money and also deciding not based uh, on any farm policy, but uh, based on perhaps uh, the mood of the national government on who gets medicine and where that medicine or medical supplies are uh, sent to. So I want to congratulate uh, our very distinguished uh, sister, uh, Senator Senator, for thinking about health matters and ensuring that um, we match our desire to have devolution by also introducing legislation that uh, midwife this process. This uh, piece of legislation it will go away a long way in providing a platform in its board for the voices and opinion of representative of Council of Governors uh, to be uh, present when uh, policy and uh, regulations are being enunciated. Uh, it will uh, provide a platform uh, for representatives of county governments when matters that affect counties uh, are being discussed and perhaps when agreement uh, that uh, will facilitate uh, the works of our county governments uh, are being uh, uh, drafted and also signed. Uh, the input of representatives of our county governments uh, will be on hand to articulate and amplify the positions 
that uh, our county governments uh, will uh, desire that be made part of that uh, policy. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if um, we fail to support and pass um, uh, this uh, very uh, wonderful uh, bill, Mr. Speaker, what will, uh, uh, what we'll be doing as uh, a house is we will leave uh, county governments uh, to operate at the mercy and at the discretion of the cabinet secretary responsible for health matters when the constitution has made it crystal clear that uh, matters beyond policy are matters that uh, domicile and correctly belong to our uh, county governments and must therefore be done according to the plans and according to the desires uh, that our county governments have so that um, our citizens and uh, Kenyans um, reap the full uh, benefit of uh, devolution. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, this uh, medical um, supplies authority will uh, definitely be resourced and uh, it will uh, definitely uh, access um, uh, sufficient resources uh, to be able to supply medical supplies uh, to uh, county governments. And uh, uh, since it will be resourced, um, it is important to have it structured in such a manner that uh, its resources and how the resources are channeled and the benefits of those resources uh, are pigeonholed in such a way that each and every county government uh, will be proud to associate uh, itself with the activities and uh, the programs of uh, this particular authority. Mr. Speaker, with those very many remarks, I beg to support and uh, I conclude by congratulating my colleague, Senator Senator, for coming up with uh, this uh, step that is uh, a step in the right direction. I know much more should be done, but this is a step in the right direction and it is a wonderful step that deserves a pat on the back. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Congo Mugin. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also rise in uh, support of the bill and uh, First, I want to go on record as uh, passing my messages of uh, condolences to the family of Bob Colmo, who passed on yesterday, uh, succumbing to the scourge of, of cancer. Uh, Mr. Speaker, health is one of the very important and uh, key function that was devolved by the 2010 constitution that was enacted by the people of Kenya. And Mr. Speaker, health is everything. For this country to develop, for our economy to flourish, we need a healthy generation. And Mr. Speaker, most of our people reside in counties. Most of our people who seek medical services reside in counties. And uh, Madam Spe uh, Mr. Speaker, for us to stop our the people we represent from seeking medical treatment in uh, the city of Nairobi. We must ensure that medical services, medical care in our counties is functioning. And Mr. Speaker, the biggest disconnect in our endeavor of providing adequate and quality med, med care to our people is lack of adequate medical supplies. Uh, to our hospitals at the county level. And uh, I really must salute uh, the mover of this bill, our good friend, Senator, Senator, who has acknowledged that uh, the governors play a very key ro role in ensuring that uh, we have adequate supplies of medicine to our counties. Mr. Speaker, I've had occasion uh, 
you know, to visit my county of Nyamira in response to the cries of, of our people where there is a shortage of medicines. And, uh, and Mr. Speaker, most CECs will tell you that oftentimes they will place orders to Kenya Medical Supplies uh, Agency, but they will never meet the requirements of various counties. And in the process, you find that people will go to hospitals, they will meet well-trained uh, uh, doctors who will attend to them, prescribe medicine. But I don't know the experiences from other counties, but in most of our health facilities, at least in the county of uh, Nyamira, patients will end up being referred to various chemists within uh, the county. And I think that's not a good thing, Mr. Speaker. For us to be able to have a functioning healthcare system, we need a one-stop shop whereby a patient is attended by a doctor, medicine is prescribed, and there is a pharmacy within that hospital. In fact, uh, Mr. Speaker, in most uh, referral uh, county hospitals, we have uh, county pharmacists who have been employed by our county government who are in charge of uh, ensuring that we have adequate uh, supplies. In fact, we have set up uh, uh, good storage facilities, including refrigeration systems to store medicine. So we should actually not have uh, this problem of having shortage of, uh, of medicine. And I'm happy uh, that uh, in acknowledging uh, the, the, the fact that we need to have a very good interaction between uh, the, the county of uh, the, the, the county governments and the KEMSA, the Council of Governors will now be represented in the board of, of this new proposed Kenya Medical Supplies uh, Authority. Because, Mr. Speaker, it doesn't make sense. Uh, if you read through this act, does it make sense to have representation from the Ministry of Finance, representation from the uh, Ministry uh, in charge of uh, devolution, uh, representation from uh, uh, the Ministry of Health, and then you exclude uh, the governors who are consumers of, of, of the uh, services we get from the Kenya uh, Medical Supplies Agency. So I think this is a very good uh, move. The only problem I have is that uh, we still are approaching this, uh, this matter as if everything must be resolved from the ministry. Because, Mr. Speaker, if you read, that, if you read through the bill, uh, it is proposed that other than the representation of the principal secretaries from the ministries I've mentioned, the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Health, and Ministry of Devolution, again, the minister has been given a leeway to pick four other board members. So in, in total, the central government is going to pick seven representatives, and then the Council of Governors will pick two. I'd rather we give more representation to the Council of Governors so that we have uh, representation of uh, uh, two members picked by the uh, minister and then we increase the representation for the Council of Governors uh, to be four. And uh, I think it's last week that we had a public hearing on a bill that has been moved by my good friend, Senator Ali, on cancer. And uh, presentations were made on uh, the need for alternative uh, therapies in the treatment of, of cancer, that we, we should not just concentrate on chemotherapy as the only remedy for treatment of cancer, but we can look for other remedies, including nutritional remedies, including herbal. And I'm happy that uh, in this bill, uh, we are now obligating KEMSA to think outside the box and uh, consider making supplies that have uh, nutritional formulations to our, 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 our uh, uh, county hospitals. Because uh, Mr. Speaker, what I heard uh, from the presentations during the public hearing is that uh, these nutritional therapies, uh, these herbal therapies, can also provide very good solutions to the treatment of, of cancer. And I was impressed that uh, some of the presentations were being made by people who are trained medical doctors. So these are not statements that were just being 
uh, thrown without a basis, but these are from the experts. People have, uh, you know, had one-on-one -on -one interactions with, with patients. People understand what value nutrition can bring to, uh, to cancer patients. So I think this bill, by and large, is, uh, is really progressive. It's good, and, and I think uh, uh, it's good when you can have a period. You know, when you are doing medical supplies to counties, and you are putting something in the minds of those who are in charge, but at least you need to have a supply in your stocks that is not lesser than six months. I think that, is, uh, that creates hope that uh, we'll have an end to this issue of uh, shortage of drugs. And Mr. Speaker, if you look at the budgetary allocation of most counties, we give enough, most counties allocate, I think the highest sum of allocation to health department. But I assure you, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, that uh, in most of our health facilities, despite that endeavor by our county government to provide for what I'll call uh, adequate finance for the Department of Health, there's still a problem with the enough uh, medicine in the stocks. And the reason they'll tell you is that we had made requisition we were promised by KEMSA that these drugs will be delivered on time, but up to now we are waiting for these deliveries. So if we can have a situation where, you know, as we plan, we are sure that we are going to have a, a stock that is going to last for the next six months, that will provide some solution to this issue of shortage of, of medicine. And Mr. Speaker will be surprised that other than uh, the concerns being raised by the Ministry of Health, in terms of getting the data correct, the other departments don't take health as a matter where they need to have figures, to have statistics. We were, uh, you know, having an engagement with uh, the ministry that is in charge of census. And, uh, you know, they gave us a, a sample of the questionnaire <laughs> that they are going to use for the coming census. And Mr. Speaker, you'll be surprised. There is nothing touching on health. And we are trying to ask, uh, you know, these people that is, does it even concern you that uh, even for the government to plan, you need to slot in something on your questionnaire, uh, you know, where families should respond. For example, how many families are taking care of people who are suffering from uh, a terminal illness? Or even to say, what is uh, your, your response to uh, the, the medical care that uh, you have uh, managed to get from the county hospitals, from the referral hospitals? So that we have, we have figures, uh, Mr. Speaker. We need to know in, in our counties how many people have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, afflicted by this uh, disease or cancer or any other uh, terminal illness, so that uh, we as a country were able to, to see that in our budgetary allocations, this is what we need to set aside for enough provision of uh, drugs for the terminally ill. And uh, also, we need to know, in terms of our senior citizens, you know, those aged 65 and, uh, and above, and who are getting, uh, you know, uh, Medicare in, in our counties, do they get enough supplies of medicine for the conditions that they are suffering from. Because I, I, I was once in uh, Australia, Mr. Speaker, and you'll be surprised that uh, in Australia, Madam Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, sorry, anybody suffering from cancer gets free supply of uh, drugs from any pharmacist. It's, it's the res responsibility of the government to meet uh, the cost. So if you go to a hospital and uh, the medicine that you have has been, which has been prescribed is not there, uh, you can go with your prescription to any chemist, you will get the supply, and then the government will meet the cost. I think that is the favor that we should uh, you know, return to our senior uh, citizens, and I think we should uh, be pondering as we look at this bill, how that can be achieved in our uh, counties. So in supporting this bill, uh, Mr. Speaker, 
I hope that it will provide a solution. And I think the only solution I'm thinking about is timely distribution and supplies of medicines to our facilities at the county level. I hope that by the, this house enacting this bill, we'll be getting a solution uh, to that problem of ensuring that we provide adequate Medicare to the people who reside in our counties. With those few remarks, uh, Mr. Speaker, I support. Senator Dr. Abdullahi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, the problem with the Senate is that we pass very good amendments, and when it goes to the other side, it's shelved or things are changed. These amendments are good. Uh, the county government is the main customer of KEMSA. Uh, but the national government still wants to stick back to it and handle it like their baby, which is a very big mistake. Yeah, yesterday, the Committee of Health, we went to Laikipia, where there's a problem, Mr. Speaker, and 61 doctors were sacked. And when we talked to the governor and said, why did he say, say oh, you know, they, they left their job, they were away for 21 days, and I sacked them. That is the attitude of some of the governors. And it, I'll say it's unfortunate and it's wrong. And also the senators, look at this house now. It is empty. Eh? You know, we have a problem. People just want to be seen up to four when they can be seen over the TV. They don't want to come and contribute to issues which are devolution, devolution oriented. This cancer and health is, devol is mainly devolution. We are killing devolutions ourselves and we are supposed to protect it. This is a very unfortunate thing, Mr. Speaker. Uh, when it comes to health, everywhere you go, there are unions, fighting counties. The counties don't respond in the right way. The national government does not want to let go uh, health. So there's this tug of war. And in the end result, it's going to cause a lot of problem in the counties. Uh, some few week, uh, days ago, it was Kirinyaga. Now it's like Hippia. I'm told Kisumu has a problem. It will go to every county, every county. How are we going to do with these things? These are not only labor issues, okay? Sometimes when you talk to the doctors, they have genuine concerns. And when some of the members here say that if counties don't have supply of medicine and a doctor prescribes medicine, what, what will, if this doctor tells these patients to go and get this medicine from outside, if that becomes a crime, where will he direct this patient? You know, we should not always associate everything with corruption or with bad intentions. A doctor has no alternative. A doctor's job is to look at this patient, see what this patient requires, and write a prescription. It is the responsibility of the county government to buy and provide this medicine in the hospitals. So there are issues which are for the doctors, there are issues which are for the county government, and when you look at both sides, as far as I am concerned, they are all guilty. Kemsa is mostly, as I said at the beginning, supposed to be dealing with counties. Some counties buy from Kemsa at quarterly levels, and they supply what they have. What they don't have, they buy from outside. Uh, but the national government wants to keep all everything. Like now, counties are given, uh, if you say, well, you check for the budget of uh, health in all the counties combined, it's like three billion. And the National Government Ministry of Health has 96 billion. What is it doing with that money? Why should it keep that money? Okay, counties uh, send doctors for postgraduate training. They pay their salary, they pay their money, when they come back, the, these doctors will want to be promoted. There is no money for that uh, to, to perform that. I think something should be done, and I'm working on something that when it comes to possibly postgraduates, the national government should take care of them. They pay for them. 
they, ha they give their salary, and then when they qualify, they send these doctors to where they are required, not just where they came from. If, if uh, we were told yesterday, I don't know whether it's the truth in Laikipia, that there are 35 doctors who Laikipia government, county government, sent for postgraduate. If they all come back, the county cannot even absorb them. So what will happen? So there's a lot of push and pull when it comes to this issue of health. And health as a devolved function, the most important devolved function, as the way I see it, uh, the Senate should, take, should, be, should make sure that instead of always saying this or that and that, they try and support uh, the counties when it comes to health. And because this is our docket and this is what we are supposed to do, Mr. Speaker. The, the, when you talk about now the, the board, as uh, the former Senator Mugeni said earlier, the board is mainly comprised, comprised of people from national government. The two we are trying to add now, out of the four the minister was supposed to appoint, the two which we say the, the county uh, council of governors should appoint, might not even go through the national assembly. The, uh, the, the CEO of, the, of, of KEMSA is appointed by that board through the minister. The CEO is responsible and answerable to the Minister of Health. So what happens? You know, everybody knows where their bread is buttered. So they, they will take they will always respond to the to the national government instead of the county government. Or the Senate for that matter, which is supposed to oversight and look into these issues. Mr. Speaker said the problem here in Kenya now is when you look at devolution. And the way I, I said earlier, the national government wants to take back this uh, from, I'm, I'm sorry, so I might go off the mark sometime because I got, I saw the union of doctors in Laikipia. The, you, you know, the way they do things, when ministry calls for a meeting, the union is called. The union and the ministry are in cohort, to, uh, they are trying to bring health back to the national government. And now, counties and people at the grassroots have realized that it is better that health is devolved. So as Senate, not as health committee or as this, but as Senate, I think we should put our foot down to make sure, to try and solve this issue and what we can do about it. You know what happened to the Health Act? How it just went through our back and it was signed? How other things are being done without the health being consulted? I think this is not the way to go. Uh, counties should also make sure that at least most of their drugs they buy from KEMSA. Most of some of them don't. Some of them, I'm told, just go to chemists and send millions to chemists. That's not the way to go. When you can easily buy from KEMSA, if you don't get from KEMSA, there's other organizations like MEDS, which have proper drugs, which are cheap, and instead of going to chemists, or you do... Uh, uh, you buy these things in an orthodox manner. If counties, uh, the way you are supposed to do is that from the dispensary level, the health centers, the sub-county hospitals, the referral hospitals, uh, these things, they do it from uh, the lower level and it comes up to the CECs who will give this order. If the KEMSA cannot provide all the drugs which were requested, then uh, the county government pays for what they have. If they can buy 60%, 70% from KEMSA, KEMSA will also be functional, it will be profitable, it's able to work proper. But if we don't do these things in the proper way and you do it behind every birth back and you want to, you want to enrich ourselves, uh, then I think we will have a problem, Mr. Speaker. Uh, when it comes to the personnel, we are talking of UHC, we are talking of other things. UHC cannot work without proper personnel. And as one of the members said here earlier, the doctors should be well taken care of, the nurses should be taken care of, the clinical officers, and all the health, uh, health stuff. Uh, if you remember well, I know 2017 or something, there was a CBA which was agreed with the doctors, with the nurses, with the clinical officers. That money is still outstanding, over 11 billion. We have tried what we can, as a, even in the health committee, in finance committee, uh, but the county governments cannot afford it. The national government does not want to help out these issues. We are talking of UHC. How, do you, how will you manage? All these things will fail. 
because people are not serious about what the way I see it, because without personnel, how will the USC function? Uh, the four pilot uh, areas, counties, the money they are being given, we are told 700 something million, 750 something or 67 million. 60 or 70 percent is supposed to go to Khemsa. 30 percent is supposed to go to the counties. But when you ask around, you hear a lot of funny stories, Mr. Speaker. So these issues are not straight. We need to do more. And I think as Senate, we should put our foot down to support counties and to support devolution and health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Professor Samson Ongeri. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to contribute on what I think is the most important piece of legislation, the bill which is before us. During my time as a professional, the KEMSA was set up to be able to rationalize and ensure that the, in the procurement of drugs and medical equipment was synchronized so that we don't have this everyday language of shortages, shortages when people appeared in any health facility, be it where there's a dispensary or a health center or a district hospital, or a national hospital, or indeed the referral hospital. Because one of the most problematic issues at that time was the lack of drugs being available or the availability of drugs in all these peripheral centers. And this was one of the reasons why there was tremendous motivation during the constitutional making process that people felt that they were excluded from the health packages that had been rolled out to counties or to districts at that time, today now called counties. And they needed a devolved system. And they wanted health and agriculture devolved fully to the county governments. Now, when you devolve a system, you must be aware, Mr. Speaker, that you must devolve not only a system, but you must devolve the expertise that is inherent in that system. Why do we talk of uh, this particular KEMSA bill being amended? And I thank Senator Senator for bringing up for the amendments is first of all to leverage and maximize the efficiencies that are related to the procurement for mass procurement. Through that process, we must also be able to create the economies of scale so that a drug which is procured individually may become much more expensive, can be able to be obtained when you have this mass procurement in a big with big discounts, and those discounts must be passed on to the county governments. That was the essence of creating KEMSA. The other essence of creating KEMSA is that there is a plethora of drugs being peddled by drug peddlers all over the place, and with a very sweet language, of trying to cut out and tell you that this drug is efficacious or is suitable for a particular condition of illness or disease. And Kenyans have fallen victim of these quacks who go around uh, bringing this type of drugs to the markets and telling them this can be able to heal a particular disease here and there. What is the net effect of that exercise? that whereas there were certain diseases that were comfortably and peacefully treated with a simple penicillin, they have now developed resistance to particular bacterial infections, and therefore treating chronic illnesses that have de developed uh, resistances to basic drugs 
that are useful and essential in the market is now becoming a major, major, major problem. That's why you are having so much of this chronicity of, of, of issue of illnesses within the society, and people don't get well better, don't get better soon, sooner or later. So that's one of the problems, that in getting cancer to be in charge of procurement of drugs and medical equipment was to be able to be able to assess the efficacy, the, the, the molecule that be, will be able to deliver the minimum dose that will treat a particular uh, uh, disease and be able to give you a cure on a prescribed day, one week or, or 10 days, whatever is the prescription from qualified doctors. Now, that is the essence of ensuring that KEMSA gave that expertise of efficacy to be able to uh, treat these drugs. The second element why KEMSA was set up is to be able to impart safety. You can have a drug, but is, is it safe? Is this the drug which is being manufactured by properly registered pharmaceutical industries, or these are from the side kiosks that are being peddled and the patients fall victim of these drugs? So it was important that the element of safety is factored in. Then there was the question of quality. I've talked about efficacy, whether it is enough dosage. I've talked about the safety of that drug. And I've also talked about the affordability of that drug, equality and the affordability. So these were the elements that we now, now this bill is seeking transfer to the county governments. Because they are the people who are in charge of health at the county level. And unless we are careful, we may pass on a monster and create a bigger monster than we ever started with. That's why I'm bringing up all these elements into the fore so that we can see where we, where we stand. There is the fourth element that is so critical, that these drugs must be available and distributed on a timely fashion. I will invite you, Mr. Speaker, to go to your county, or my county in Kisi, or anywhere else. And when you put a simple question to the county executive, whether the drugs, where have you ordered your drugs from? They will say from Kemsa. Well and good. Sounds fine. Where are the packages of drugs? They will show you the packages of drugs. Just take an extra interest to open up those boxes. They do not contain the very basic essential drugs that are necessary and important for running the health institution at the peripheral level. The bulk of those receipts, the, the uh, procurement uh, of, of boxes that you see there are condoms. I'm not, I'm not castigating condoms, but that's what you get, simple equipment that is used for socialization. So I am worried, Mr. Speaker, that Kenyans are being told, counties are being told, yes, we have had a supply of medical, medical supplies from KEMSA. And because people have been made to believe in KEMSA, people say we have got adequate supplies and they will be delivered to our health centers and to our dispensaries. Unfortunately, they are not there. As a medical professor, my major interest would be that in that kit, do we have the essentials like the immunization packages through the cold storage? And I say so because if you do timely immunization, and if you are able to take care of nutritional requirements, of growing children and the society, and you are able to take care of the environment under which people are staying, 
That's what I call public health. Preventive and promotive health care. That should be the major function where major resources must be spent by county governments. I guarantee you, Mr. Speaker, that you reduce the disease burden by more than 50% going that route. What does that mean? You also reduce the bed capacity. You reduce the, best, the bed occupancy in hospitals because occupancy in the bed is curative medicine. When you have more people in the hospital, you incur more costs, more expenses than is required. And therefore, I urge the county government, through the Council of Governors, that they must actually request for a bigger stake in this KEMSA representation. Because if you are going to have a representation which is weak, you cannot be able to get the kind of services I've already enumerated above. You'll be told, yes, we'll send you your kit, and when it comes, it's incomplete. There is even a bigger headache, the fifth headache that I would like to call upon county governments to be aware of, that some of these drugs have been procured, unfortunately, by fellows who do not care by looking at the shelf life of those drugs, the expiry dates. You find some of the suppliers who will come and push to the KEMSA drugs in the name of, these are efficacious, fine, but when you look at the shelf life of those drugs, they have only got about six months to go. And when you do bulk supplies to all the county governments, they have absolutely no clue of the kind of supplies that they are getting from the KEMSA. They don't look at the, uh, life, uh, the life, lifespan of, that, uh, of, of, of those drugs. And therefore, they lie there. So when you go to the county government and the county health sector, you are told, uh, Mr. Senator, we have plenty of drugs here. But if you open those drugs, you will find that the bulk of them have expired. And the bulk of them are those drugs that are not being used in that area frequently. What's the point of supplying people with malaria drugs when you know the epicenter of malaria is in a particular regions? And you supply the malaria drugs in areas where malaria is not rampant. Obviously, they will expire. We have a classical case and I was very pained the other day when I saw a mother crying just simply because there was no snake venom, anti-snake venom in, in McQueen in Kitui. It's a very sad story when we know that in those areas, in these arid and semi-arid areas, and I worked in Wajia as a medical officer, and I know that one of the biggest uh, enemy that you will find during hot periods are snakes. You will find them dining with you in your bed, coming to look for coolness, drinking water in the houses. And if you are not careful, they will just pour that potion to you and you'll be dead. So for one of the most essential kits that must be available in all these arid and semi-arid areas where the snakes are rampant is the anti-snake venom. What do you find? You find the snake venom in areas where there are no snakes. But the areas where there are rampant snakes, there is no anti-snake venom. Anti-snake anti, 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 anti venom. So we, we lose patients. We lose people. So KEMSA should be acquainted with the, what I call the geographical survey, the medical geographical survey of pattern of diseases. There are other diseases like cystosomiasis in cesspools, in uh, Kampani, in other areas, in other places. When you have sleeping sickness in Lambwe Valley, therefore, they should do a demarcation where you find 
some of the conditions, medical conditions are rampant and be able to spread out those drugs and supplies to match the medical conditions that are prevalent, that are important in that area so that they don't run short of supplies. That's why the county governments have to resort to ad hoc purchases of these uh, drugs from the shelves. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, this is a bill that's more than what you see written here. That we go wrong in the procurement of these drugs and medical equipment, then we are done. Sometimes, in developed economies, drugs may run their course and they are expired. There is what we call rewiring, rewinding. There are certain pharmaceutical industries that can rewind those drugs. We have also become victims of what we call intellectually, intellectual property drugs. They are 10 times more expensive than the generic drugs. Generic, it doesn't mean that they don't have potency. It doesn't mean that they are not efficacious. It does not mean that they are not, they are not quality drugs. They are indeed quality drugs. But these are the drugs that can be cured because they have already, uh, Mr. Speaker, I feel that I want to enrich this debate. When time comes, please add me some minutes because it's such an important topic that I think we are richer in this debate than just, uh, just glossing over it. You can rewind those, uh, those, uh, those drugs and be able to get a life out of them. And they are important, they are critical, and they are efficacious. I will give you an example. When I was the Minister for Health, we had the HIV epidemic. It was a prevalence rate of 14%. The intellectual property rights, the, the, the patent drugs were out of this world in terms of cost. $1,000 to be able to treat a patient. Nobody will afford that kind of thing. So we went and under the WTO, World Trade Organization, I looked at the law, I looked under TRIPS agreement, section six of that, if you have an emergency in a country, you can declare an emergency, and then that will allow you to import what you call generic drugs. What did I do? I made a request, parliament held its session in Mombasa, and the only agenda on that session is the HIV uh, uh, pandemic in this country, 14% on the average. The other areas were the other one. By the time we reached there, people were saying, what do you want to do? Professor Ongeria said, yes. One, that let's do, amend the law, be able to go through the uh, WTO uh, trade-related activities, uh, Article 6, and import the generic drugs from Brazil, from India, and from Cuba. In fact, Cuba were producing the molecules of HIV AIDS. We even produce, these are the ones which are being brought there. What happened to the prices from $1,000 to $200? Today, they are below, I think, $100. That's what you must be able to study the market of drugs and see how, whether they have done their course of 10 years or 15 years, depending upon what patency they had given that drug, and go for cheaper but more efficacious drugs that will help our populations. So, Mr. Speaker, what am I saying? I'm saying this, that if we are going to allow county governments to partner with the national government, then it must be precedent upon this that the county governments will have a bigger say through this bill. And if it need be, further amendments should be done that they have a bigger say because they're the greatest consumer. Why do I say so, Mr. Speaker? Because I know that today, the national government through the Ministry of Health is only in charge of policy and the infectious diseases, pandemics, control of infectious diseases, and also the control of uh, uh, the, the referral hospitals. How many are they? The Kenyatta National Hospital, Moi, uh, Moi Referral Hospital. I uh, hear now the third one is uh, uh, in, in, in Nyeri, 
uh, in Othaya. That's it. And then, of course, the infectious diseases hospitals. That's all that they have. So where is this budget going? So the next step that we must take as Senate is to be able to ensure that government gives the bulk resources from the national government to county governments to take care of health uh, facilities. And I think that's the way we should go. So I have no quarrel with this uh, amendment that when we tied up that the two members who are going to the, to the, to the KEMSA should be able to take care of these arrangements, that finally, when this is agreed upon, that this uh, bill should be scrutinized further to ensure that all those arrangements, particularly Senator the human... Senator Professor Ongeri, I add five minutes. Yes, yeah. because I know that the human risk... Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Because I know one of the most pernicious headache is the human resource in county governments. The human resource in county is becoming a problem. County governments do not know how to handle the human resource. Some have gone for uh, easy way, cut a blanche dismissal. That does not solve the labor relations problems. These are specialized people. You must give them a hearing. You must listen to their wants. You must listen to their problems. You must try and accommodate them. And as we expand the level five institutions in county governments, all county governments are potentially level five, they are, they are potentially level five hospitals. And with level five hospitals, with the kind of certification we have in treatment and the equipment which are being supplied to these hospitals, you need experts to be able to run these machines. How can you expect experts to run, to run those machines and you pay them peanuts? And you do not recognize their working hours, their facilities, what they need to do. It was a time when I was an intern at Kenyatta National Hospital. It was then the King George VI Hospital. And uh, we were only about, we were about 10 African doctors. The rest were white people. And you know, we never had even a single time to sleep. We worked 24 hours, but we were devoted to that work. How do we get our doctors being devoted to work jealously for our own people, for our own patients, for our own parents, for our own sisters and brothers, for our own relatives and Kenyans at large? Kenyans are suffering, particularly the disease burden. We have cancer as a big scourge in this country. That's why the cost on the management of cancer throughout the country is enormous. All of you are privy to the realization that you are being called upon for fundraising for cancer patients, either in this country or going outside the country. Now, if only we can do, it's no point going to go and check somebody with cancer when this cancer is at stage four. It's too late. No amount of money will help that individual or that person. But if we had proper screening facilities in our hospitals, in our clinics, and we put this as part of our priority, now that the incidence of cancer is much higher than what we had anticipated, then we should be able, this is why I said the medical supply kit should include some of this testing and some of this screening in our hospitals so that when we screen, we can be able then to detect some of these complicated diseases at this late stage. And if we are able to detect them, then we can be able to offer treatment on a timely basis and you save life. So I support this bill with a few provisos that when it comes to the Council of Governors being represented in this KEMSA, they should demand a bigger voice. If need be, the CEO. Number two, that when it comes to the division of revenue, we want to know that from national government, some of these delegated, devolved uh, functions like health, agriculture, and, and other areas should have a bigger cake sliced off. In fact, I don't know why we're even arguing 
on 327 uh, billion Kenya shillings. It should be much higher than that because all these complications we're inviting ourselves to is because we have not been able to give proper health care, preventive and promotive care in our institutions. I thank you, Ms. Madam Speaker, and I support this motion. Senator Haji Faria Ali. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for allowing me to support this bill. Madam Speaker, I also wish to thank Senator Mary, Senator, uh, for bringing this timely bill. Uh, Madam Speaker, as you're aware, uh, as per Section 96 of the Constitution, Senate is here to protect uh, counties. And uh, Madam Speaker, uh, this amendment, the, uh, me the medical, uh, Kenya Medical Supplies Authority Amendment Bill is speaking to that, Madam Speaker. Uh, so uh, so um, um, uh, Senator Mary is really uh, performing her role in terms of ensuring that counties are well represented, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, uh, also in section four, there is also a provision whereby uh, it allows uh, county government to enter into partnership with uh, uh, KEPSA for, uh, for appropriate supply of drugs and, uh, and medical supplies, Madam Speaker. Uh, uh, Madam Speaker, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of the board, as provided under Section 5, Madam Speaker. That is where I still have a problem, Madam Speaker. As much as we have provided two slots for counties, Madam Speaker, out of nine slots, two slots is too few for county government, Madam Speaker. Because uh, everybody else is appointed, uh, like even um, finance appoints one, uh, another, you know, there are three PSs which are sitting in this board. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, I have a problem with that, Madam Speaker. Because if all these people represent government, surely there is no need, I think two should be enough. Uh, one, one from, um, one from uh, finance, because, you know, in most uh, boards, a representative of finance is must because of financing of the functions of the board. And then Ministry of Health, leave it there. Why do we need another devolution uh, slot, a, a PS for devolution? We don't, in my view, we don't need that. Let us replace another position for county government, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in terms of uh, section, um, uh, section 5, subsection 4, I can see in terms of the com composition of that board, we must have a procurement specialist, we must have uh, somebody from pharmacist uh, specialist and another person who has knowledge of commerce and, uh, and finance. Madam Speaker, some of, uh, uh, all these positions, Madam Speaker, they have their own board. I think let us uh, limit in terms of these people who, who must be there, they must be a member of each of those professional bodies that cover those um, uh, uh, those roles, Madam Speaker. Because, like, um, I know uh, procurement and supply, there is a Kenya supply chain, something, something. I, I don't remember the exact uh, title, but I know it is there. And then pharmacists, there is pharmacists and poisons and medical board, they, they must be a member of that. And then there is also the finance and uh, commerce, there is ISPAC. So let us put, because why I am insisting them to be member of a professional body is because those professional bodies, Madam Speaker, are regulated by, uh, they are regulated by their own, uh, they regulate their own membership. And therefore, if a member is uh, uh, not able to perform what they ought to perform, sometimes they are disciplined by their own uh, uh, professional bodies, Madam Speaker. But if we just put people who are specialists, Madam Speaker, who are not a member of any professional body yet, we are putting them in as some specialist, 
Then, Madam Speaker, in case of an issue, we have no mechanism of following up, Madam Speaker. I agree with uh, Professor Samongeri. The fact that procure, when procurement is done in bulk, there is economies of scale, Madam Speaker. But what often happens, Madam Speaker, you find that most government-run uh, entities are even much more expensive. Despite the fact that if you, have, if, if you procure in bulk, you're supposed to get economies of scale, but due to corruption, Madam Speaker, sometimes that, that you know, uh, economy of scale benefits are never harvested by the, by, the, by, by, by the people of this country, Madam Speaker. And at times, Madam Speaker, value of money is not taken into consideration, Madam Speaker. Uh, um, so, in terms of the composition of the board, there are nine board members. For me, I believe at least four members should come from the counties, Madam Speaker, because health is 100% devolved, and all the medical supplies and everything that uh, these people need, I mean, the CAPSA is supplying, uh, is, 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 for, is, for, is for counties, Madam Speaker. So for me, for them to So are you, uh, Senator, are you proposing an amendment? Yes, to Madam Speaker. Composition of the board? Yes, Madam Speaker. Then you need to probably find a way of putting across that amendment. Uh, 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 thank you, Madam Speaker. I appreciate your, 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 your uh, I mean your comment. And I also, I'm building an, uh, an amendment and I'm just trying to justify why those amendments are necessary, Madam Speaker. Um, uh, Madam Speaker, also in terms of uh, 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 CAPSA having uh, Kenya Medical and Supplies Authority having a presence in county is one of the other things that I think should also be conversed because uh, if they don't have currently and they're all based in Nairobi then in terms of even and the, I like the fact that we are proposing let them have uh, supplies for six months but if they are all in Nairobi sometimes when counties, of course, we urge the counties to, pl to plan ahead. But if the, the very essence uh, authority that is uh, essential for uh, continuous supply to, to county government is based in Nairobi, then they are not extremely useful to counties. So maybe that is also another issue that, uh, that needs uh, to be looked at, Madam Speaker. I am not a health expert, but probably that would would add to the to the to the to, to will, will strengthen this uh, 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 amendment madam speaker the other issue that i wanted to discuss is um, uh, the the issue around uh, regulation madam speaker if we leave the regulation the way it is open ended like this the, the cabinet secretary might not be in a hurry to, to make regulations for this very important amendment, Madam Speaker. And therefore, my amend, I also bring an amendment that they bring, they, 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 they bring the amendment within one year. And, and that uh, should be included under, you know, regulation under clause 21 of this bill, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, this is a, a timely bill, Madam Speaker. It is a bill that is 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 uh, uh, that is uh, very friendly to counties, Madam Speaker, because if the, in the spirit of the constitution, uh, medical uh, health is devolved, then functions should also follow in legislation in terms of ensuring that that is made, Madam Speaker. And then, in terms of even procurement, in this uh, under section. Um, uh, manner of discharge of function. One of the things that really made, me, I mean, f f made me proud is application of sound commercial principles in the procurement, storage, distribution, and other medical facilities, Madam Speaker. So if you have all those things in place, and Mr. S Madam Speaker, sometimes we make brilliant laws, Madam Speaker. But of course, my fears also I share with my Senator, Dr. Abdullahi, that 
sometimes they, they, we make good legislation in Senate, they are changing the other house, and they have no better ideas to improve, they just, they just uh, I mean, they don't do it right. The other issue that we suffer from this country is we have laws, but in terms of implementation of those laws, is 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 not is not um, done properly, Madam Speaker. And sometimes I wonder, even in our house, I think there is need sometimes for implementation committee so that we make sure that everything that the resolution we pass, because we come up with good legislation, we come up with good resolution, we come up with good, but in terms of follow up to ensure that uh, the laws that are passed are follow up is a bit lacking, Madam Speaker. And governors, I mean, just uh, do a lot of, uh, I mean, conduct that lack sometimes integrity or sometimes are not prudent for the people they govern. But, uh, and then there is somehow, even when they break the law, there is impunity and there is nobody to follow up to ensure that the laws are followed and there is no consequences, Madam, Spe Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, this is a timely bill and I support Madam Speaker and I thank you for allowing me to contribute. Senator Masitsa Naomi Shionga. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to support the bill sponsored by Senator Mary, Senator, on the KEMSA, Kenya Medical Supplies Authority Amendment Bill. Madam Speaker, uh, this bill, as my colleagues are saying, it is timely and uh, it needs a lot of scrutiny because it is a bill that is touching uh, lives of our people, especially when it comes to universal health care. That is one of the uh, big four that we need to achieve and the big four that the president is urging Kenyans to enable him achieve during his term. Madam Speaker, KEMSA has had so many challenges in the past. And before I go to the challenges that it has had, this bill or this particular legislation, the responsibility before even the developed country, the counties, it was to enhance harmonization on procurement process of our drugs and other supplies, controls of stockhouse, to uh, facilitate the supply chain of medical equipments and other products, medical product, standardized drugs, proper monitoring and evaluation in the system, especially in the health system, properly dealing with the transparency of these drugs, not forgetting the self-cutting of safe drugs that are going to be consumed by the citizens, especially when we are talking citizens of Kenya. However, the management and the forcefulness and how it has been being managed since the devolved government came into place has been of apathy. And healthcare or universal healthcare cannot be achieved when we have push and pull. That's why I'm saying this bill is timely and it's going to assist the fragmentation of functions that are being witnessed through the, government, the county governments and the national government, which is fighting for superiority. If you look at the uh, bill framework or the bill's framework, it talks about the inclusivity, whereby uh, we, the framework is providing uh, the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority to collaborate and work with the county government. What else do we need? If we are concentrating power at the national level, apart from power, we are concentrating funds that needs to, be, to go straight to the county government so that it can assist. At the national level, we are killing devolution. Hence, we are killing our own citizens. 
because we are not enabling any function to function. Right now we have revenue bill that is collapsing or how it might have been collapsed. But when we look at this bill, it might give some hope. If passed, it might give some hope to Kenyans and to county government. Because if you look at clause four, where it talks about partnership with the county government to establish drawing rights, and I repeat, drawing rights, and maintain appropriate supply chain system for drugs and medical equipment. I have worked in the Ministry of Health for over 25 years, and I know what it means by procurement and supply chain that is transparent. It enables standardization. It enables quality equipment and drugs. It enables quality services to reach its intended population. And if this bill, as it, as it is stating, that the county government, who own the devolved function of this health care, is going to be achieved as it is, then we are going to achieve, through partnership, what we intend to. Madam Speaker, if we look at consultation, in any forum, in any partnership, like the county government and the national government, especially in healthcare, when we avoid the word consultation, then we shall miss everything. And in this bill in clause six, where the bill proposes the amendment of section 19 of the act to provide further responsibility that the authority to ensure and console the county government prior to procuring, procuring of trucks for the county. We are saving our counties from the push issue that has been there. The, the KEMSA has been fond of pushing trucks, pushing unnecessary equipment, something that we have been struggling since the life of this parliament. It is going to control it. If only consultation can yield its purpose. And trucks need to be procured in regards to its a requirement. You do not need to push trucks or medicine or any equipment to a facility that, that does not. So when we console, then we know the needs that particular country, particular county has, and hence procuring the right equipment and drugs to that particular county government. Madam Speaker, the business of KEMSA, when it comes to maybe procuring of these drugs again, it might have been facilitating the country as a whole. But when we look at the county government, they are still also, and I want to say, our county governments are still, yes, struggling with how to come up with structured functions especially in healthcare. And that's why we are seeing so many strikes are on. They do not have health care. And I want to appeal that this bill looks at the maturity of anything that they are, or any function that they are giving. As much as we, ha we are proposing KEMSA to be, to be, to be us, to, or to carry the value of enhancing healthcare, uh, healthcare services, let, it, let the county government also be responsible and ready to assist its citizens. Because representation and inclusion should be of value to its people, especially those who are receiving these services, unlike enriching people at the county government, just a few. Because where there is struggle, and especially when we know in our country here, when people hear about procurement, Somebody is always thinking about fattening their pockets. County governments need to come to terms and know that even if as much as we are pushing this, we are not saying that we are going to concentrate power to them to procure what is not necessary for the people. So what I'm saying here is that KEMSA has had so many challenges even before uh, the proclamation of our constitution. But it's the highest time we need to embrace developed functions that are, and one is healthcare, so that we can 
enrich uh, our, our, our counties, we can make sure that universal health care to be achieved through transparency and through entities that are responsible and through entities that are going to work and the functions and systems that are going to be transparent and that are going to be monitored. Otherwise, I support this bill. I support it 100%. And I want to say that it is only through this bill and the amendment that my few colleague, my colleagues will put in that will enhance universal health care achievement and the supply of this to be achieved. Lastly, I want to say that the kits that will be sent through KEMSA or through count government or that will be procured, let them have, as my colleague has said, all the necessary, as it has been, all the necessary equipment and all the necessary uh, medicine that are needed in that particular or in specific areas or regions that are, will be useful. Psyche like rapid test kits, essential drugs, just as it has been, not just unnecessary because one wants to make wealth out of it. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and again, I support. Senator Milgo, Alice Chepkorin. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for also giving me this chance uh, to contribute to this uh, very important pill uh, with uh, just on the medical supplies uh, authority. Madam Speaker, uh, I, this bill has come at the right time, particularly so uh, when uh, we already have devolved units, and in this case, uh, once this bill is passed, it will go a long way in aligning Kenya Medical Supplies Authority with the requirements of the county. Madam Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, it is a challenge uh, that to date uh, medical, or in this case health, which is a devolved uh, function, is still held within the national government, and that is why Kenya Medical uh, Supplies Authority is still supplying uh, most of the medical uh, requirements of the counties, even without regard to the necessary requirements, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, these ones has actually caused a lot of suffering to the health units in these civil units in terms of either delaying the drug supply or in this case at times uh, the counties, the medical facilities in the counties even ends up uh, getting experts medicine, Madam Speaker. Uh, it is actually uh, quite a challenge when there is expired medicine because once medicine expires, already that is a uh, poison, and uh, it, uh, it means, therefore, that it cannot treat a particular disease, and that is the reason why, even of late, there are very many health cases that are coming up, uh, even such as cancers, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, it is quite unfortunate, even as we are speaking right now, uh, that there are still the medical facilities that are procured by the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority that have not even been put to use Today, it is collecting tasks, and the reason was because of the fact that uh, this facility, this authority simply went and procured uh, facilities, Madam Speaker, that was not even required by that particular county, or in this case, after procuring, there is no staff that has got the skills to be able to, to use uh, the particular uh, machines, Madam Speaker. Uh, I think this bill, uh, again, under uh, uh, clause uh, five, uh, will in this case, uh, uh, I mean, open a way to ensure that in the board of this particular authority, at least there will be representation from the county governments. And in any case, uh, while they have given two to me, I think there should have been more than two representatives because the major uh, people of interest in this particular case are the counties, Madam Speaker. And in any, however, uh, with these two, uh, I think then this will be a force to the counties. It will help in procurement. Uh, needless to see here that uh, uh, when Kenya medical authorities uh, uh, procure medicine, normally the procurement in this case 
is very high, Madam Speaker. That is the, the, uh, the procuring amount normally goes at, at a very high level, Madam Speaker, as opposed to when the, count, the counties can be able to deal with their own procurement entities and in this case be able to negotiate based on their abilities, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, I think uh, uh, instead of the board being nominated by the national government alone, I think the Council of Governors should also be allowed to take part in issues of nominating the board, Madam Speaker, so that in this case, uh, they'll be able to, uh, be, uh, to, to provide uh, the necessary uh, the kinds of people, and in this case, uh, this same type of people will be able to serve them well. Madam Speaker, uh, decisions that are normally made, as I said, uh, are very significant to the counties. However, in this case, we find that when the Kenya Medical Authority supplies are the ones who procure, these ones are prone to a lot of corruption. And in any case, that is why uh, we find that our people are still uh, seeking medical attention in the uh, Kenyatta National Hospital and other national uh, medical facilities, Madam Speaker, in the state of actually seeking medical supplies uh, in their own counties. Madam Speaker, Clause 6, which proposes to amend Section 19 of the Act to oblige the authority to, to, the effect, uh, to that effect, in this case, will go a long way to ensure that at least the county government will have a say, and in any case, be able uh, to deal with issues of the health units uh, in a better way. Madam Speaker, I'm sure if this bill will be able to pass, our people will be saved uh, to much money because uh, normally, like in my county, in most cases, we have uh, our counties uh, as, of, as of now controlling level, five, level one to five facilities, and like in my county, Longista Hospital, which is supposed to be the largest hospital, normally would lack certain drugs, it would lack certain facilities, and our people are forced to come to Kenya, the National Hospital, as well as Moi River Hospital, Madam Speaker. And in any case, there are many uh, sick people uh, with very humble backgrounds, and they may not be able to even afford, even, uh, afford the med medication in these particular facilities, let alone even uh, affording the transportation, Madam Speaker. And in any case, uh, I think the evolution was supposed to take uh, that is uh, services right at the doorsteps of the people within the county. Madam Speaker, I'm sure uh, if this bill uh, will be ascended to, our counties will be saved. Not only the counties will be saved, but as well, uh, the, the people of those particular counties will be saved the nightmare of having to seek uh, medical uh, uh, treatment elsewhere, Madam Speaker. Uh, finally, I uh, wish to say that um, normally uh, with the medical uh, authority supplies being controlled by the cabinet secretary, what it is is that normally uh, sometimes they propose regulations that do not even occur well with the counties, Madam Speaker. And I am sure uh, once this bill is passed, uh, what it is is that the cabinet secretary will be able to console the county governors uh, in this case to ensure that uh, the county devolution units are, in this case, uh, cared for, Madam Speaker, as captured in Clause 7 of this bill. Madam Speaker, I'm sure uh, this is one of the bills that, in this case, uh, has been, in this case, is one of the most important bills, Madam Speaker, particularly when it comes to health facilities, more particularly right now, when our government is interested in issues of universal health care. We are talking about universal health care, and in any case, for that one to be able to succeed in the, in the big four agenda, what happens is that we need to ensure that our uh, issues of supplies of medical, supplies of equipment, and management, as well as the board in this case is streamlined in such a way that uh, this one will facilitate uh, the mes medical supplies as well as uh, the services that are over to the people right in the counties, Madam Speaker. With that, Madam Speaker, I support this bill. Um, I see no further requests. And I am 
informed that um, the mover of this bill, being Senator um, Mary Senator, is on official duties outside the country and therefore is not able to make a reply. I therefore defer uh, the reply to, to another date. Uh, Honorable Senators, uh, we move to the next order. Order number 11, the County Hall of Fame Bill, Senate Bills number 39 of 2018, second reading. Um, Honorable Senators, I have done some consultation. I am informed that the rest of the business of the day, that is order number 11 to order number 19, uh, may not be processed today. For various reasons, the movers are not available, and I therefore defer the rest of the orders, that is orders 11 to 19. Order senators, there being no other business for the day, honorable senators, it is now time to adjourn the House. The Senate therefore stands adjourned until Wednesday 3rd, July 2019 at 2.30 p.m.